So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology and welcome to the iPhone 10 versus the iPhone 14 Pro speed test. I can't believe I haven't done this one already. Let's begin with a boot up in three, two, go and see which one could get there first. Now we're talking about a five year difference here, 2017 versus 2022's latest and greatest deep purple, hard to get iPhone 14 Pro iPhone 10 was the phone that basically started the evolution of the, to this phone to this day. So you can see iPhone 14 Pro five years later only boots up a few seconds faster. Now, a lot of people say that doesn't matter, but honestly, I think it would be pretty freaking awesome if an iPhone could boot up in like two or three seconds, but we're still not at that point, but the iPhone 14 Pro faster. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and take a look at Face ID now. So if we take a look, you'll see not a major difference again. So yeah, you're not really unlocking any faster five years later either. Again, I would still like to see Apple employ a feature where you don't even have to swipe. You know, once it sees Face ID, it unlocks. Like they should put that feature in there. You know, I think as an option to go ahead and turn it on or not. But here in 2022, the iPhone 10 still unlocks just as fast as something like an iPhone 14 Pro. Now, do keep in mind, before we do the app test, 16.1.1, it's pretty awesome that a phone from 2017 has the latest software though. That's pretty cool. Apple A11 Bionic, it's clocked in at 2.39 gigahertz. It is clocked in over a full gigahertz faster on the iPhone 14 Pro, and you can see double the RAM. In addition, generally speaking, the scrolling is smoother on the iPhone 14 Pro due to 120 hertz. Although the iPhone 10 scrolls pretty similar to your base iPhone 14 with its 60 hertz OLED panel. But man, I think the iPhone 10 has done a great job standing the test of time. Let's get into the app test. So let's see if all this power several years later, many iterations of the Bionic chipset make a difference. Let's go into calendar. You can see faster. We'll go into calculator faster on the 14 Pro. Clock a little faster. Weather a little faster again. We're talking about a second, maybe half a second. You can see that's about a second there. We'll go into games and this is actually the most difference I'm seeing on any of my speed tests so far. The 10R was behind as well, but this one definitely behind. You'll see right here, iPhone 10 taking its sweet old time. However, I will tell you that I did use it a little bit before doing the video and I'm gonna make a video about is this phone still usable, but a little sneak peek, it was doing okay. Wasn't great, but stay tuned because I'm gonna make an updated review on the iPhone 10. I'm interested in discussing with you guys about where this phone actually stands day to day right now because you could probably grab one of those for 100 bucks, 200 bucks. You could see Instagram faster on the 14 Pro, but once in, Incredible performance on the iPhone 10 for being five years old. I remember when an iPhone 5S was five years old, it did not perform like that. So that shows you that CPU technology has advanced greatly and it hasn't really been advancing much. Now, a lot of people say that the iPhones are fast enough, but I've seen phones boot up faster than the iPhone. I've seen certain phones look a little snappier, but not in the raw power. I think Apple can make the animations a little faster in the future if they want their iPhones to look quicker, although they are fast already. We'll go into Groupon and you'll see Groupon first there on the right. But I mean, look at this. I mean, the iPhone 10 can open stuff, no problem. Battery life was horrible in my testing so far on 16, but you could see you're just like a couple seconds behind. Um, that's a big deal, I think, day to day in our fast paced world. I think all of it will add up over time as you're going through applications, you might get annoyed, you know, but I think the iPhone 10 has gotten a little slower over these updates. I don't remember it. Hold on. That was a mess up. Let me go ahead and reopen that. I, I feel like it got a little bit slower over time versus when it first came out, but that could be me. It's maybe, maybe it's just the new phones have gotten so much faster that you don't really notice it too much anymore. We'll go into Asphalt 9, and the games should be several seconds faster on the 14 Pro. Not only that, with the 120 hertz, and there you go. 
Not only that, with the 120 hertz, the 14 Pro actually performs so well that you, you might even wanna end up using your iPhone to play games these days. You know, if you get the Max especially over maybe an iPad on the go because they perform so well, they have 120 hertz and games can be enjoyable. Specifically, I would go with the Max on this one, but do you see how long that took on the iPhone 10? Again, the iPhone 10 can play the games though. It really can but it warms up and it drains a lot of battery in the process. The 14 Pro you could play for a while without draining too much battery. This will be an excellent upgrade, I feel like. If you guys want to see a full comparison, let me know, but I feel like the iPhone 10 to the iPhone 14 Pro is one of the biggest upgrades of any of the iPhone recommendations this year. Even the 10R does better, like I said, in performance, but you know, anything before iPhone 11 would be a solid upgrade to the 14 Pro. Even iPhone 11 is a solid upgrade, but iPhone 11 users, I feel like, can make it to the 15 if they want to have, you know, the dynamic island and not have to go to the Pro. You could see right here, Crossy Road taking its sweet time on the iPhone 10, Temple Run 2. Let's see how we open up here. And iPhone 10 behind again. I remember the iPhone 10 beating on most phones. Now the iPhone 10 is getting beat on by its successor. Well, it's several years later successor. And you could see. I actually think this makes the experience, look at that choppiness on the iPhone 10. I actually think this makes the experience feel newer on the 14 Pro. Now you get the dynamic island, you get the squared edges, better battery life, better cam, way better cameras. You know, this upgrade would feel massive if you guys went ahead and wanted to do this one. You're not going to get a lot back on your iPhone 10, but if you're the type of person who goes the long haul and you kept your iPhone 10 this long and you're like, bro, I'm ready for a new iPhone. This one will be the next iPhone like this that will last five years. Again, that's how I feel about it. And we'll go ahead and go to 3D Mark. And you see the iPhone 10 a little bit behind, but I think overall it wasn't super far behind, but like I say, it's a few seconds on a lot of applications. And those few seconds, I mean, let's do the math here. We have four times five rows of apps. That's 20 applications right there. If you add 20, Let's do 20 times the average of two seconds, right? That's 40 seconds difference. That's almost a minute, you know? And then if you have multiple apps, hundreds of apps a day you're going through, or maybe even 50 or so off and on, you're gonna lose a minute or two of your life every day with the slower, you know, performance of the iPhone 10. So if you wanna save a couple minutes of your life every day, you could definitely do so by getting a 14 Pro over the iPhone 10. If that doesn't matter too much, I wasn't supposed to close that. If that doesn't matter too much, I don't think you'll have a problem. Let's go ahead and go back through the apps now. All right, so we're gonna go through the applications, see if we do get a reload here. So far, so good on both of them. This just shows how efficient iPhone can really be. We'll go on to pub or the Subway Surfers and there goes the reload on the iPhone 10. Let's go into Asphalt 9. You could see Asphalt 9. Decent on the 14 Pro, where we at on the 10. They did basically the same thing. We'll go into Dead Trigger 2. That's a full reload for iPhone 10. Just totally close us out of the game. We'll go into Starbucks. Had that one, Best Buy. Groupon, eBay. And there's a little bit of a stutter when you scroll back on the iPhone 10. It's just, it's just a hair. Instagram reload. So a lot of reloads happening on the iPhone 10. Here we go. And we're getting, yep, it just reloaded App Store. That one's pretty good. We'll go into clock, calculator, and calendar. So basic apps, iPhone 10 was fine. But some of the games, some of the stuff, third party stuff was reloading quite a bit on the left. So significantly better multitasking on the iPhone 14 Pro as well. And here is the final scores of the iPhone 14 Pro. 1883 on the single core, 5357 on the multi-core. This has been done several seconds longer. Actually, probably a minute already. Faster than the iPhone 10 to finish this test. The iPhone 14 Pro really feels like a little laptop performing iPhone. It really does. Like it, it does the same performance as like my MacBook, like my iPad, 
all in your pocket. It's pretty amazing. Look at this weak score on the iPhone 10. This is terrible by comparison. Let's go to our results here. I lost it there. You can see 1883, that's a whole 1,000 points better and more than double on the multi-core. So yeah, the iPhone 10 very behind there. Now you can do video rendering on both. You can edit videos on both. However, the iPhone 14 Pro is gonna render these out faster, especially as you get longer in 4K clips. So if you wanna do stuff like that, you can go ahead and do that. I will say generally, as a general OS though, the iPhone still performs pretty good, the iPhone 10 as a general phone. Like if you're just using it for basic smartphone tasks, it's still good. And it can do a few non-basic smartphone tasks. It could do mostly what you need. You just have to have a little patience. You know, it's kind of like when people were using a 5 before and then the SE came out and that thing was blazing fast version of the 5, but people were still using their 5. That's kind of how the 10 is. We have blazing fast new, you know, chips over here, but this one will be loading and it's slower and stuff like that. So that's it for me here between these two. iPhone 10, kind of a dinosaur now, but the iPhone 14 Pro, if you're wondering, is it a big, big upgrade in speed? And the answer is yes. It's actually super noticeable. Unlike most of my other speed tests where a lot of them, it's really close, but it's not overly noticeable. With the iPhone 14 Pro, it's incredibly noticeable. So definitely a go. Stay tuned, I got more videos coming your, your way. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching, for all your support. I love y'all. I'll catch y'all on the next one. Nick here. Be sure to be well and peace.